Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, no matter where you're in the world. This is Kim Talks Resilience, and I'm your host, Kim Hayden. And welcome back if this, you're rejoining us. Um, and if this is your first time diving into a Kim Talks Resilience podcast, let me share with you a little bit of what we do here. Kim Talks Resilience is all about speaking with women who are making changes in the world, women who are stepping forward and willing to share their insight and inspiration in life, love, and business. These women are here to lead the way so we can inspire other women around the world. So if you get a chance, do hop over and check out our, our Queen of Resilience.shop. Queen of Resilience.shop. This has got some kind of tongue in cheek, fun stuff, bags, t shirts, that type of thing. And it helps keep this podcast going. So, our guest today, uh, you know what? I think it was the love of hair color. We both like natural hair color. If you didn't see the wink as you're listening in, I winked there. That was a that was a little tongue in cheek. Uh, uh, this gal, I think, actually, I could shop with. She is uh, my soulmate when it comes to uh, having fun hair. Celia Barsby is a creative visionary and now your personal cosmic soul guide. Celia creates a safe space for women seeking inner joy and connection to their own wisdom. You can find her passion, your passion for living in the creative flow with the universe and recalibrate your life so that it becomes vibrant and magical, full of self-discovery and purpose. Discover that light, what lights you up and see what is possible for you. You'll receive your soul resources on your journey. Your soul structures will be revealed to you in your powerful and fun, creative ways through various transformational tools, enabling you to reclaim your soul's purpose so you can flourish and grow. Come weave with Celia at your soul's garden, step through the rickety gate of your creative heart space, and open your pathways into your soul's magic garden. And you know what? What a great way to start Monday. Start the week. Good morning, Celia. How are you Hi. doing? Oh, I am good. Uh, we've reached afternoon. Monday morning went very well. Just, you know, so you're you're in for a treat. Um, awesome. It was, morning. It, it was a good one. Um, although I understand that you've not quite got the beautiful sunshine that we have today. No, we went from last week uh, here in Calgary. So I'm in Calgary, Alberta. Um, be here, twang folks. Don't worry. It, it is there. I am from Kansas originally. That's a whole nother show on how I got from Kansas to Canada. But uh, here in Calgary, we were 26.8 degrees record setting weather. So that's like 75, something like that. It was just a crazy number. Uh, last week, Thursday, and by Saturday morning, we had four or five inches of snow on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, you know, Calgary's weather is, um, it, it, yeah, it's like, it's a little multi-personality. So <laughs> it really is. It's like, that's why we keep four seasons of clothing in a single closet. We all have to have big closets here. You never know. <laughs> so how are you doing today? Are you doing good? Uh -huh. Yes, I, I'm having a lovely day. Um, so excited to be here. This is really, um, really a lot of fun. And, and that's something I, I enjoy. I, I just like doing new things, trying new things. Um, so yeah, this is this is really fun. If you guys get a chance, if you're listening to this, do hop over and check out our blog and everything with this because then you will see Celia's awesome hair. <laughs> awesome hair. Celia and I look like Easter today. We got pink and purple in the house. Okay. So Celia, let's dive into this. I would love for you to share with me a little bit of who you are and where you're at. Okay. Okay. So, well, let's start where, where I live. Um, I live in the UK. You might, might have guessed that one. Um, and if you were to put a pin right in the middle of the UK, of the UK, sort of as to where it was to balance, that's, that's where I live. I live three hours from the sea in all directions, which, 
you know, there was a time when I was dreaming that I would go and live by the sea when I retired. Um, but I've really, I, I've now found my home. This is my, this is my home space. So that's where I live in the UK. Um, and you invited me to say, who am I? And it, isn't it interesting when we when we start to go, well, who am I? And how do I define myself? Um, but I'll start with, I was an only child. Um, and then I have three children. I've done the numbers. I was a maths teacher. Okay, so numbers numbers are pretty cool. I quite like, I quite like the number, of the whole number thing. Um, so I was an only child. I have three children plus two, um, I don't, we don't like the word stepchildren, so they're my other children, I'm, I'm their other mum, so they're my other children, um, and then we, I have, we call them bonus, bonus oh, babies bonus, around here, we have bonus babies, bonus babies, so I have two, well they're not really babies, but I have two bonus children, bonus children, um, I love that, I'm going to write that down because I love that, um, I have five grandchildren, uh, two bonus grandchildren and one bonus grandchild just announced today. So I'm oh! so excited. Um, so yeah, so from one, like you know, my my family is expanding. Um, I am a teacher. I have always been a teacher. Um, from the time that I used to line my dolls and teddies up, you know, when I was seven and put them through their paces, their spellings and their sums. And they always got them wrong. But, you know, hey, that's where I learned how to teach. Um, so I've not always been in an educational setting, but I recognise that throughout my life, whatever I've been doing, that teaching thread has been running through. Um, so that I think you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a wife. I have a wonderful husband that is um, sitting through in the other room uh, listening to me. Um, I have experienced some interesting transitions in my life. So you've heard about my bonus babies. So you can guess that I've been I've experienced the divorce as well. Um, so and I've got a cat. And I've got, I've got Everybody a cat needs a cat. Well, you could not have a garden party without a cat. Hello. Well, I know, I know. <laughs> In fact, I she that. arrived. She arrived just before garden party really was birthed. So, uh -huh. you know, see, it all works uh, together. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love you. One of the things I want to point out that you just said is that you said the word interesting in relationship to some of what other would call challenge or trauma. And I love the fact that you pre-framed that, that this gave an interesting opportunity to shift and pivot versus it was a challenge I had to overcome. I think that in itself says a lot about you as a human being. So let's dive into what you do and and you know so for those who are listening if you've listened to any of the past podcasts or this is the first time that you've gotten the opportunity to dive into a, a kim talks resilience podcast you'll notice that i in, intrinsically made celia strip away her work as to who she is creating the preframe because i do believe our preframe all the experiences in our personal life doing the 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 uh to uh, the 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 instructional guidance with our dogs and our our teddies right that actually starts guiding from very early age who we are and i believe that that leads into the uh substance of what we do yeah, yeah. so let's dive in to what you do and then I'm going to throw a few questions at you because I always like there to be actionable steps people can walk away with. That's really important that this is a really well served 30 minutes of somebody's life. So what do you do, Celia? Okay, so what I do is I am a transformational coach. I had a conversation with somebody this morning that she and she said, this is this is just transformational. And that was just in a like. 20 minute conversation about actually almost about something else, you know, we'd, we'd, we met through networking. So what I invite people to do is just be open. I mean, you've already talked about opportunities. And it's being open to what does the universe want to tell me today? 
you know, being really, really super present. Now that's, you know, you can't put what I do in a box because actually what I do is I just talk to people. <laughs> and that, that's, I mean, one of the things I do talk about is the things that we are really good at, the things we are really passionate about, we don't see as being anything very special. We go, well, yeah, it doesn't everybody see this, do that, you know, think like that. And so when you work with a coach, that is where they can, where I can guide you and say, oh, well, have you thought about looking at it like this? And often I do a lot of creative work and often we go, well, actually, let's just look at this completely upside down. What does it look like now if I turn my page on its head? What happens if I turn it 90 degrees and look at it like that? You know, so creativity is mm -hmm. a powerful tool that I use. Um, I am an energy practitioner, so I work with energy medicine as well. So these are some of the tools that I sort of pull in when I'm working with, with women um, to say, well, you know, you could look at it like this. Um, we talk about journaling. That's just another tool. So it's like what I do. It's if you've got an empty treasure chest you've got an empty it's not a treasure it's a toolbox you've got an empty rucksack an empty basket I will help you put your tools into your basket and I'll show you how to use them there you go perhaps it's a garden. there you go yeah. well and, and we're seeing more women step into this leadership space because it really is a leadership yeah. space and through yeah. we in North America and my guess it's the same everywhere because human beings are actually the same everywhere um that they post covid they had this huge resignation of women over the age of 40 out of corporate america and mm -hmm. then i think it was 29 percent of those women went back to corporate america and now we have another wave of resignations going on mm -hmm. so there's this bouncing mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. coaching is yeah. is is um it can be a challenging space because it's, you know, how, how does the coach monetize their transformational opportunities? Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a very interesting um, field. And yet it's a, it's a opportunity that the new age of knowledge, our technology, everything is opening up. Mm -hmm. Mentorship is critical. Mentorship yeah. is critical. We have mentors as we're growing up. Those are our parents. We have mentors as we get educated. Those are our teachers. Um, and yet then we're thrown out into this world as adults. And now we end up, a lot of us end up in a silo. And we have all these ideas, be it good or bad, that echo in this silo. And it's very hard to live to your fullest level if all you're doing is getting that reverberation of your own mm. feedback. Mm. Yeah. What are some and things that that you you see that you feel that are some of the biggest challenges that women face in living to their greatest potential? I think it's absolutely that what what we describe as the reverberation are the old stories. You know, we are now entering a whole new world and we need we need leaders. We need women that are let's 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 go women my age who actually have wisdom to bring to younger souls that are waking up and going, I, I don't want to live my life. I don't want to live my life like this anywhere anymore. It doesn't have to be done the same way as it's always been done because we don't live in that world anymore. You know, and I think the pandemic really brought that to, to light, which is why we have all of these women going, I don't, I, you know, no, I'm not going back to doing it like that. But the old stories are the ones that whiz round around our heads. Well, we've had what? 200, 200 years, basically, of the industrial yeah. age. Yeah. And that yeah. is 
where we started seeing, you know, traditional. And I, I think a lot of people uh, understanding the the ecosystem of what's going on is, I I think would actually give a lot of validation and freedom to people to pursue yeah. Yeah. this opportunity yeah. that we're seeing now, uh, because the reality is is we've moved into the industrial age um, and away from, you know, matriarchal societies and such mm -hmm. because of, of, you know, the light bulb of being able to work, you know, or because before the light bulb, we needed to have access to those daylight hours to run our businesses and run our e-commerce. And we've been sitting with the light bulb for what, a hundred and, Edison, how long have we been sitting with the light bulb? 18, 1868 or something like that. So we've had 150 years of where we could actually change, I think, no, 130 years, I believe, uh, uh, since the very first light was turned on, yeah. right? And, and, and the reality is, is we are not dependent on the sun coming up and the sun going down in order to do our work. We are not dependent mm -hmm. on our clientele being right there. We are not dependent on any of those limitations that we see within traditional workspace. So the opportunity of uh, education and self-exploration yeah. are yeah. at its all-time high. And women are multifaceted. I mean, oh, that's what, yeah. you know, that's why we make great doctors and, and things like that, because you can have a bedside manner and have creative insight. I met a gal who has two doctorates and three master's degrees. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. a hairdresser from Kansas. So <laughs> I was pretty impressed. Um, what's one thing a woman could do today who is struggling? You have to remember moving from corporate and a paid gig. Mm -hmm. There's a lot mm -hmm. of fear and insecurity. Yeah. Where's that next way? How am mm -hmm. I going to pay for the roof over my head? What's mm -hmm. one thing a woman could do today if she's looking down that that road at, at that mm -hmm. vulnerability of being completely exposed when it comes to her revenue. What's one mm -hmm. thing she could do today to, to further expand her opportunities? Mm. I think uh, that's a great question. I think, you know, the, 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 uh, the work I do around energy medicine, um, the words we use carry that frequency. And so vulnerability is, is in there. And that, you know, do we see vulnerability as a weakness or as a strength? And, you know, my, um, I, I talk about being my authentic, rebellious, quirky self. And that's what I encourage other women to, to, to be, to be their authentic selves. And that means at times being incredibly vulnerable and being, you know, I walk the walk, you know, I don't, you know, it's lots of, tea, it's not, oh, I like teach this stuff and then I go off and I do something else. You know, that vulnerability and being open is something that we are learning that it is the, the safe thing to do because women traditionally found that maybe it wasn't very safe to be their authentic selves. You know, if we go back 300, 400 years, just, you know, start talking about the conversations that we have with, you know, with women today and we're talking about energy medicine and we're talking, you know, people will talk. I, I, I think there's a whole story in Salem on, on women who tried to be authentic. I think so. Yes. I, yeah, I think I think I read that at school. And so, you know, we it's taken time for women to be able to say, okay, now I get I get to come forward. And that is going to make us feel really vulnerable. Um, and, you know, did I leave my, you know, I, I left my job recently, not 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 that long ago. And I didn't leave with a you know, a beautiful financial package. I didn't leave with all my bills taken care of. I felt pulled by the universe to say, this is what 
we want you to do now and it's now the time is now mm-hmm. and I and that's a leap of that's a huge leap of faith yeah but when you do that you know I um it was really interesting because I was writing some some thoughts you know as I was sort of bringing the energy to this this beautiful podcast thinking about resilience and I wrote down you let go to create space if you are holding on to the security of your full-time paid job, the security of your pay packet, the secure, you know, or, you know, whatever that security like looks like. It's not all just about finance. You know, I left a marriage eventually, but it took me a while because I didn't want to let go of the security because security, and we'll perhaps talk a little bit about my story in, in a bit, um, but security was the, the you know, I, I that's, was my go-to. I have to be secure. But I have, I wrote down, let go to create the space. Because until we go, okay, here I am, I have let go, I've made the space, and then, then the universe can move in. We, we can't sort of cram the universe in and then let go. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. <laughs> In my experience, I, I know I totally agree. I, I, for me, as a visual, because I'm all about the food, I love my food. It's like going to a buffet. You cannot peruse the buffet before you you decide to start filling your plate, and you you have one plate, and you start putting stuff on, right? And then all of a sudden, you see this awesome dish, but there's no room left on your plate. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you know. If you, if you, sometimes you have to be brutal and say, I can only eat one plate of food. Um, I'm going to scrape this up because this over here is not going to be as pleasing. It's not going to give me, it's not going to be as filling. It's not going to be as nutritious. It's not going to be whatever. So I can make room for this over here. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, we are, what is it? 35,000 decisions a day. The human brain processes 35,000 decisions a day. We are inundated with nearly 10,000 images or or something around being sold, being marketed to. Mm-hmm. And and it's it and we and it and literally two thirds of that is just subliminal. We don't even we're not even making decisions around mm-hmm. that because we're only doing 35,000 right? Decisions, right? Mm-hmm. We do 35,000 decisions and 10,000 sold opportunities, right? So mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff going on in your brain, right? From getting up in the morning and, and doing your affirmations, mm-hmm. you know, Absolutely. doing yeah. what you're grateful mm-hmm. for, writing mm-hmm. those things, mm-hmm. making your coffee, your tea. I'm, I'm a huge tea drinker. And that's, you know, the very first thing I wake up with is, oh, I'm looking forward to my tea. It's the simple things that get me excited so I think um, that's interesting it's interesting that gratitude I mean yeah we can have a cold conversation yeah no go for it one of the one of the other stats that I don't I I, I'm going I heard I need I need to go back and research and get and go what were those numbers but it's about all of those decisions that you've made all of that all of that you know all of the all of the food that has been put on your plate throughout the day and um, and it's interesting because we still come at things a lot of the time from a scarcity mentality mm-hmm. of, of scarcity mindset and going, oh, I need that. Oh, oh I need that. Oh, I need that. That's when oh, we start I juggling do. the two and three plates at the buffet. <laughs> we can get it all to the table. So I do my gratitude practice at night. Um, and so I sit and reflect on my day. Um, I, I, I have my own, um, I have my own, I have my own gratitude journal, which I use. And, um, I perhaps did a little, little show you, I'll show you, show you a quick page. Here we go. Here we go. If you can, if you can see this. So here is, oh, hang on. I've lost my camera. There we go. There's my gratitude journal. Oh, and all of you have images in there and it's more free form. It's more free (laughs) form. Awesome. So I have. I, I go, I reflect on my day and I think about the things that have happened. And I just, and actually I'm just grateful for everything that's happened to me during the day. I have three top things that I note. I have an inspirational box. What inspired me today? 
three things I wish for tomorrow. Now, here's the key. What am I going to carry through to tomorrow? What energy do I want to move, move with me? And I leave the rest behind. And I have a little flower to doodle in and I colour it in. And that's really cool. Doodling is um, actually very healthy for the brain. Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, I think so it's you multi purpose. Know, You're doing lots of things on a single it page. I love it. <laughs> on a single page. And I found um, actually, since I've been using my own book, I think that there's, there's something about using my own tools. And because if I'm going to say to people, hey, Hey, look at this amazing tool, and and they go, oh, what is, you know, does it work? And I go, oh, I don't know, I've never used it. <laughs> I went, hang on a minute, that's not very authentic, is it? So I went, I get to use my book, you know, and that was quite that took a little bit of, um, oh, I I get to write in it too, so it's really cool. But what are we bringing forward? What am I bringing to my day, and not carrying forward yesterday's plate of food, which is going to be pretty yucky. Yeah. So, you know, we go, OK, yeah, this is what I'm bringing. And it might be that I go, oh, that's really awesome. Now, let me think about the energies that I need tomorrow, what is coming up. I might look at my calendar, you know, what's what's happening in, in my in my world. So what will I need? You know, please, universe, I would like to be empowered with this is what I'm going to need tomorrow. So that's that's um you know and there's no right or wrong way of doing about you know so actually, setting your setting your stage you're setting yes, your stage yeah excellent yeah yeah and then you have an intention setting at the start of the day probably you helps know. you sleep a little bit little bit better when you just it's put tough. all that to rest I know it does and it's interesting the dreams um that you then have and you can reflect on those because you know your subconscious is all the time um saying hey have a look at this you know but if you're looking at that from a place of gratitude and you know anticipation actually that would can really shift so yeah it can help with your sleep patterns definitely it's really cool cecilia can you share a time in your life that without resilience we wouldn't be talking right now <gasps> Ooh. Yes, I can. Yes, yes, I can. Of course, I can. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sort of mulling over, which would be the most appropriate one to share with you. Um, in my in my book, I talk about the the whole subject of resilience as going through the mill. Um, now. It's an old fashioned water mill that grinds the corn and we are under pressure. So a time in my life when I was under pressure. I was leaning into which, you know, what wants to be shared here. And I was going to tell you about the time, you know, time my dad died who I was going to talk to you about divorce but actually what's really interesting is what's coming forward is when I lost my mum now I'm an only child my dad died when I was 10 and my mum was 92 we'd been you know it was her and me through throughout and it was the point when you know she um she hadn't been particularly she had good health really um but that period of her transitioning was probably the longest three weeks of my life because we didn't know what was, you know, was she going to recover? We'd had an incident, you know, she'd had an episode before when we thought we were going to lose her and then she was OK. And that was a, a an incredibly pressured time. Um, I had started the practice of morning pages six months before she died. I had started a yoga practice six months before she died. And that enabled me to move through that period and the transition afterwards of, of you know, the, all of the practical things we get to deal with and 
I think what I discovered in that time, and you know, using that whole analogy of of this of this mill and the and the stones that are grinding together, is when we are under pressure, we actually discover how strong we are. That it, we look, I look back and I go, how you know, could I, if I. If I'd looked four months ahead and gone, this is this is what you're going to experience. I'm going, how am I going to do that? How am I going to deal with all of the practicalities and the emotional roller coaster that was doing this? And that pressure, if I talk about the analogy of the mill, between those two stones that are grind, my art hands won't do it, they're going to do that, they're grinding the grain that releases the flower, that ha has the potential to be life-giving, yeah? If we go back those 300 years, back to when women were not allowed to be doing the same things that we're allowed to do now. If you didn't have flour, you didn't have bread, and if you didn't have bread, you weren't able to sustain life. So that pressure releases that potential. We get to do the work. It's noisy. It's, you know, I journaled, I did yoga, I put colour on page, I doodled and I did the inner work because that we get to do that. And we and we and it's not being afraid to do the work because you're working on the inside, you know, um, you're working for yourself, um, which is is incredibly powerful. And I learned that thinking about that water, water mill, the wheel of the water mill only turns when the water is flowing. When that water, if, there's, if, the, if the river's dried up, the wheel doesn't turn. And, you know, back in 300 years, you know, people would starve if there was no water and the wheel wasn't turning and you couldn't grind the corn, you know, you follow it down the line and you go, well, there's no bread. So we get to be in creative flow. We get to live so that our lives are nourished and we fill up. Um, and for me, that is that is through creativity. And, and I learned more about the energy work actually after my mum died. It was we do the work, you know, that and then we get you to a position where here this is this is now let's give now let's give you a load of new tools because you've you've learned how to be resilient you know we, we do the work we learn how to manage the pressure and we stay in flow um and so that and, and i think the other piece is you know what that brings up is a lot of our our shadow side that would also be my i mean my greatest transformation has been when i've been prepared you know, I talk about the garden, you know, you lift up the stone in the garden and you go, what is under there? And you go, that's your shadow side. And if you're, if you do the work to lift up that stone and go, what is going to crawl out? <laughs> the creepy crawlies, crawl deal with the creepy crawlies. Deal with your creepy crawlies, because that, that's where you, that's where you actually learn the most, you know, as a teacher, I mean, I was, I was you know, I reflecting on this the other day and going you know if I am a teacher and um uh let's oh I know let's go with spellings okay so if every week I give you the same spellings and every week you get, oh, oh, oh that's me oh, that was sorry there was some energy shifting <laughs> I'm going to give you the same 10 words to learn every week and you're going to go oh well done Kim you got 10 out of 10 again oh well done oh well done you got 10 out of 10 but you haven't learned any new, new words so I'm going to give you some harder words to learn and you're going to go oh I you know I only got eight this week and you go Brit oh that's really good brilliant fantastic let's give you some even harder words to learn and that's what we do as teachers and you know I believe that that's what we do with our soul we come to this beautiful planet this beautiful life with lessons to learn. And if we don't face those challenges, those opportunities, how are we going to learn? How are we going to learn if we're just going to repeat the same old, same old all the way through life? So 
I, That's how I totally, I totally agree. I totally agree. And challenge yourself. I mean, I just signed up for a 12 week sprint on a program and I three, I'm going to be putting six to 10 hours a week into this. And, you know, and it's like, I'm ready to grow. I'm ready to go next level. So who's going to help me? Um, yeah. Let's talk about yeah. your book real quick. The Garden Party. By the way, I love the name. Anything with party in it, I love. So talk about the Garden Party, what it does, and what can people get from the Garden Party? Okay. Um, the Garden Party is my story of how I experienced the first... 60 years of my life <laughs> and and it's a bit of a, it's a journey because everybody's life is a journey so after I share my my the you know a, a my, I've moved around a little bit so I share a bit of my journey and then I invite you to reflect on your journey and that so it's a journal as well all the way through and then we get to the really exciting bit which talks about 15 magical keys that are going to support you on your transformational journey. So again, awesome. it's a story of, it's a love story, but of the love story between my parents. Um, it's based on a charm bracelet. I'm not gonna say any more of that, but you've got these 15 little, little beautiful charms, beautiful magical keys that help you open up and it tells a story and it invites you to journal and there's a doodle space. And so there's lots of things to do in there. Awesome. So engagement. It's an engaged book. It's it an engaged is, yeah. book. Okay. It's a book. I love that. It's a book I you get that. to write in, you know, that, and you get to overcome your inner critic who's going to go, oh, you're not allowed to write in a book. But there's space. There's space, you know. There we go. That I just turned that to that page. So we've got I'm really not bigger than my camera. My there, camera. We go. Yeah. there we go. Yeah. There we go. So you've got a doodle space. And that question, for example, says, what is bubbling under the surface for you? Oh, uh -huh. brilliant. So, yeah, questions just to kind of yeah. start that creativity or that understanding of where you're at. Yes, exactly. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, where can people find you, Celia? How do we find you? How do you find me? You find me in the garden. <laughs> 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 so you can find you can also find me. Um, my name's up there, Celia Barsby. So celiabarsby.com um, is my website. Um, you can find me on Facebook under Celia Barsby. You can, if you Google Soul Garden Party, I think that's coming up as well now. Um, so I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram a bit. I'm but, a bit. You know, it's not, yeah. It's not my, it's not my favorite playground, you know? Yep. And um, my inner child. Goes, Are you doing TikTok yet? Come on, no. Celia. <laughs> No singing and dancing for you, eh? I get it. I get it. You know, you know that it's it's so interesting because uh, I talk about limiting beliefs, right? Okay, so hit one right on boom. You're too old to do TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, maybe Tim. <laughs> my team, my team sent me a list of 22 sentence starters that I've got to film. And okay. complete the sentences. And they said, this is for TikTok. And it's like, oh, okay, I guess I'm doing TikTok. I said, I can't dance. They said, not everybody on TikTok dances. <laughs> okay, I can't sing. Well, I can, but those are children's songs. And they said, not everybody on TikTok sings. And it's like, okay, I must have been looking at the other stuff. <laughs> so, so yes, so. Do pay, do, do, do tune in because I'll be doing something on TikTok. I'm just not sure what yet. Um, so I always ask for you to uh, give us a quote, but before you give a, give us a quote, I would like you to hold your fingernails up because I want somebody <laughs> to know. Since Celia couldn't decide on one color either. I, oh, that's awesome. I, you know what, Celia, I'm, I love this whole like from light to dark on oh, my, yeah, I like and that. I actually go to the paint store and I get the paint chips that have the progression of the colors. <laughs> then I go to the nail store and I find the paint that matches the paint chip. I know these people must think I'm nuts, but I get a perfect ombre because they're all I in the same. Like, 
they're Ooh. all in the same uh yeah so Ooh. i i love the fact that you couldn't pick one color either good on well, you well it's, it's good not on very you. intentionally <laughs> and it does it varies but you know there's some, awesome. there's some cool colors you know when there's, i was growing up you know, my mum had pale pink nails because that was all you could get. That's exactly, exactly. Yeah. And there's too many colors not to pick whatever you feel like, folks. Exactly, exactly. Uh, gotta love okay. the uh, um, the women like, uh, uh, you know, we've got Annie Lennox. And for my era is Annie Lennox and uh, Cindy Lauper and Pat Benatar and all these amazing female rock women yeah. like musicians yeah. uh even bjorn right and you don't have to conform to be incredibly talented and that's 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 what i love i love and i loved that about you as soon as i saw you it's like oh this will be a fun <laughs> conversation okay share with us your quote celia okay. take us out okay so i'm gonna take you out with i'm gonna show you as well um because it's really cool there we go so your deepest wound holds your greatest medicine. So when you transform your deepest wound, that becomes your medicine. So it's the experiences we have in life, all of those ones that we've talked about, all of those opportunities where we've shown and proven our resilience and we've learned and we've said to the universe, yes, I want to learn this lesson. This is what I've signed up for. Yes, I want to experience life in you know um in my whole body this is this is what i've signed up for so our deepest wound holds our greatest medicine so that's my quote that is well said so Thank well you. said so well said so ladies go get your cape because each of you are superheroes in your own right this Kim Talks Resilience. I'm your host, Kim Hayden. I want to say thank you for sharing your most valuable resource, a non-renewable resource, your time. Uh, if you ever feel that your legacy, your resiliency is lagging at all, I want you to go over to resilientgift.com and totally get all everything we do in our community free of charge. If we have our monthly magazine, we have, you know, obviously our podcast, um, you know, we have videos in there from our different events that we do throughout the year. But the, the reality is we are a community here for you. So do listen and lean in to our resilient community over at resilientgift.com. And until next time, I'm your host, Kim Hayden. Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm.